All right, back with our experiment in uh, conversational exposition here. I'm having fun with this. Yeah, it's a good time. It's good. It's good. Okay, it's good. good. Work on our way through Exodus chapter 22. And we're taking these laws that God gave to the judges of Israel to decide court cases that would mm -hmm. come to them. And since the laws are kind of given in units and segments, that's how we're considering it. So our journey now through Exodus 22 brings us to verses 9 through 13, which seems to be a section speaking more about the application of the principle of restitution. Hmm. So, David Wally? Uh, verse 9 says, For any kind of trespass, whether it concerns an ox, a donkey, a sheep, or clothing, or for any kind of lost thing which another claims to be his, the cause of both parties shall come before the judges, and whomever the judges condemn shall pay double to his neighbor. If a man delivers to his neighbor a donkey, an ox, a sheep, or any animal to keep, and it dies, is hurt, or driven away, no one seeing it, then an oath of the Lord shall be between them both, that he has not put his hand into his neighbor's goods, and the owner of it shall accept that, and he shall not make it good. But if, in fact, it is stolen from him, he shall make restitution to the owner of it. If it is torn to pieces by a beast, then he shall bring it as evidence, and he shall not make good mm. what was torn. Mm. Well, here we see sort of the spinning out of the prior principles that we've seen on the importance of uh, restitution. Respect for private property, now restitution being made. But I found it kind of interesting. Nate, did you notice this in verse 9 where he talks about any kind of lost thing mm. which the owner claims to be his. Yeah. Now, kind of here in sort of Anglo-Saxon law, we have the principle of finders keepers. You got Is it. that how it worked in ancient Israel? Well, it seemed like apparently not. You know, I mean, uh, if someone lost something, uh, whatever it would, a, a shovel, an axe, a, a sheep, that property was still theirs. Even though they lost it, 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 it remained the property of the original owner. Okay, so if you lose an axe... Mm -hmm. And then uh, I suddenly find an axe, right. you know, and wow, this axe works really good. Mm -hmm. You come over and notice that this axe that I have looks awfully lot like the right. one you lost. Then if the matter was taken to the judges, who would they be biased in favor of? They would be in favor of the person, the, the person that says, no, that was originally my axe. Right, right. So, you know, sort of under Israeli law, it's losers keepers. Yeah. Finders weepers, I guess, yeah. if you wanted to turn that's it around true. that way. That's true. But notice, verse 9 says that in one of these situations where it was his word against uh, the, yeah. the, the word of another, verse 9 says what? The cause of both parties shall come before the judges, and whomever the judges yeah. shall condemn shall pay double. Interesting. Pay double. Isn't that quite a thing? No mm -hmm. frivolous lawsuits here in ancient Israel, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Because if you, you know, brought charge against your brother or your, and, and you weren't mm -hmm. in the right, not only did you have to give them the axe, you had to give them two axes. Mm. You had to pay double. Yeah, that's pretty, uh, pretty significant there. Yeah, I, I like the idea also is the idea of uh, the judge would hear both cases. It wasn't, you know, it was, you know, another claims to be his. So there's, it's a claim that innocent is uh, innocent until proven guilty kind of kind Well, of thought. that's really cemented in here, isn't there? It's, mm. it's sort of the foundation of the idea that a man is innocent till he's proven guilty. Yeah. So a man's oath is taken to be the truth yeah. unless it's proven otherwise. That's in verse 11 where it says, right. Then an oath of the Lord shall be between them both, that he has not put his hand into his neighbor's goods, and the owner mm -hmm. of it shall accept that. you right. got to accept it. If he takes the oath and he says, swears before the Lord in mm -hmm. some appropriate way, swears before the Lord, no, I didn't steal it, then they had to accept that. Mm -hmm. But isn't that putting a lot, a lot of trust in God? It is. That God would do what? Reven or avenge what, what was wronged. And you know, if I'm lying, if it's liar, liar, mm -hmm. pants on fire, then God would light me up for that mm -hmm. in that situation. That's really where it's putting the trust yeah. in the Lord. At. Interesting. All right, uh, verse 10 talks about these laws. If a man delivers to his neighbor a donkey, an ox, a mm -hmm. sheep, or any animal to keep it, and it dies, his herd is driven away, no one's seeing it, then what happens? Well, here, here, what do you do? Then you go to the oath. Right. The guy says, no, I didn't steal it. I didn't slaughter that. How can you tell? Nobody saw it. There's no evidence other right. than this. In, in the absence of contrary evidence, you accept somebody's word. Mm. And so, yeah, the innocent until he's proven guilty. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, notice there, verse 11, the owner of it shall accept it. Okay, yeah. I'm just thinking, you know. Mm. Here I am. I own, you know, a cow. And uh, I'm going to go on vacation for a couple of weeks. I'm going to go to Jerusalem and go to the feast. 
Uh, Nate, would you please take care of my cow? Sure, I'd love to. You know, and I, I come back, and the cow's gone. It's dead. It's just dead as a doornail. And, and we go through it, and you swear, and I didn't do it. Lightning struck the cow. I mean, I didn't have anything to do with it, this or that. And then, that, and then it just says, I have to accept that. Yeah. You know, that, that's tough for people to do. Mm-hmm. You think about it, especially in our age, it's sort of given over to litigation. We want to blame somebody for everything. And some things you just got to say, it happened. Well, wouldn't you, wouldn't you say that people's words nowadays aren't as as taken seriously? Or people's word, you know, no one's going to say, I I give you my word that I will not do this. What no one, no one really says yeah. that because no one really trusts that. You know, let your yes be yes and your no, no is not a practice that mm. is really valued today. Yeah. You know, the Bible lays it out. Let those yeses be yeses yes. and let those noes be noes. That's how we should be talking to one another. Mm. But Today, I mean, it just seems that people are a little bit more suspicious, a little mm-hmm. bit, un, a little less trusting of people's words. Well, yeah. should we say a little bit less integrity? Right. Where, where you know, uh, the, this the system that the Bible gives to us, you can see how it's engineered to work with people who fear the Lord. Yeah. Who, somebody who would say, I will not swear to God that I'm telling the truth if it's really a lie. Mm. It just seems like today people would do it without conscience. Definitely. You know, if it would give me that cow, I'll I'll do it. Mm. You know, and that kind of thing. And so you, you can mm. see how God made this law in a sense for His people, for the people who would listen to His word mm. and put themselves under the teaching and the instruction of His word. Yeah. It reminds me a little different context maybe, but I remember reading about Samuel, and one of the things that said about Samuel um, was uh, that none of his words fell to the ground. Yes. You yes. know what I mean? I that he was such a passage. man of integrity. Yes. That what he, and I was talking about kind of more of his prophecy, maybe, you know, right. but still the idea that when he spoke, he meant it. Yes. And, and I think about it that. Mattered. I, it mattered. And you know, as a man, I don't want my words to be thought, yeah, I, he speaks, and they just fall to the ground. Right. They, they, they have no worth. Right. Right. And it really says, hey, no, you accept that oath. Yeah. Okay, we've spent a lot of time talking about this whole principle of restitution. Let's cover two more verses, verses 14 and 15. Uh, if a man borrows anything from his neighbor, and it becomes injured or dies, the owner of it not being with it, he shall surely make it good. If his owner was with it, he shall not make it good. If it was hired, it came for its hire. Okay, this is fascinating, isn't yeah. it? You borrow something from your neighbor, and if the owner of the cow, that's, we're just using a cow, if the mm. owner of the cow isn't with the cow and the cow dies, then me, the borrower, I have a responsibility. But if the owner of the cow is with the cow when it dies, it's assumed that the owner of the cow would take responsibility mm-hmm. over it. But notice at verse 14, the, the obligation is, he shall surely make it good. Yeah. Well, you know, that's, that's the, the idea. Yeah. Sometimes this loss is suffered and no one's to blame, but where somebody is to blame, you had to make restitution. Mm-hmm. You had to step up and be responsible. Mm-hmm. Again, great principles. Well, again, it just reminds us of how grateful we are. David, you brought this up on our last one. How grateful we are that when we um, squandered the responsibilities that God gave to us, that we have a Redeemer who makes restitution for us. That's something we always want to be mindful of. We owed a debt we could not pay. He paid the debt we could not owe. Oh, that's right. You, you, it really applies like to this. A debt we could not pay. A debt we could not pay. There you, go. That's it. you got it straight here? Uh, get it is. right in your own mind yeah, first. You got exactly. it. You got Good. It. Okay. All right, well, th- this puts an end to this little section here of w- several, th- since the beginning of the chapter, the first 15 verses, it's all been about principles of restitution applied mm-hmm. in different places. Now, starting with verse 16, we're going to move on to something different. Mm-hmm.